people are born into a successful and easy life. For others, it takes hard work and determination, but they get there. And when they make it, it's hard for us to imagine that these famous people ever struggled for money. But many of them were not just poor, they were homeless too. This is the incredible life story of the Queen of Katwe, 18-year-old Fiona Mutesi, who at some point in her life did not have the very basic necessity of life, food. Fiona eventually turned her life around and hers has become a story of inspiration to many youth who dream of making it in life despite their humble origins. In the quest to bring you her story, we make our journey all the way to her country home. On arrival, we are delighted to meet the team behind the Queen of Katwe. We engage with them for a while and then we are headed to kick off dialogue with Fiona. With great humility, Fiona's mother welcomes me inside her house. Growing up in a slum in Katwe, with almost no means of survival for a child, Fiona was not discouraged from endeavoring to achieve the best in life. Sometimes the words luck and hard work are the only words one can use when describing their own life. And with my next guest, that's exactly how I can describe her. From living in the slums of Katwe to becoming one of the nation's top chess players, Life Stories is glad to present to you Fiona Mutesi, a.k.a. the Queen of Katwe. I'm glad to have you, Fiona, on the show. Oh, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Who's Fiona Mutesi? Um, I'm called Mutesi Fiona. Um, I'm 18 years old. 18? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So young. <laughs> I'm 18 years old and I grew up from the slum. Partially orphaned at the age of three by the loss of her father, the lack of ability to make ends meet, so young Fiona dropped out of school in primary seven. Her story to greatness started with a need to find food. At three years old, I lost my dad. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and like we couldn't afford to live the life, like life was so hard for us because my dad could do everything for us. Mm. You know, my mom had lost like hope and everything in her life. We had nothing, we had totally lost everything. So my my mom, uh, she started struggling, maybe like how to get food, she started getting some jobs, just to get money for food, yeah, that's all, and maybe for rent. Mm. So we got some money and again, she took us to school, we started studying, but again it became worse at the age of six years. So I had to drop out of school because we had nothing. She had lost, she had no man by that time. So I dropped out of school and my brothers also, so we started staying at home. Fiona's brother was playing chess at the time and the hunger pains drove her to follow in his footsteps. The success of her first attempt in obtaining food triggered her spirit to work even harder to achieve something out of the game. Fiona saw this as a means to help her struggling mother make ends meet. So at that age, that's when I got to know that my brother was playing a, ch was playing a game called chess, but he, could, he had never told us about anything about chess. So for him, he, had, he could go there just to get food and that's all. So when he came and told me about the chess program, because I was home hungry, and when he told me about the chess program, I was like, oh, maybe I could also go and join the chess program so that I can get what to eat, because I was always hungry at home. Mm. So I escorted him and I went to the chess program. Good enough, I found there Coach Lobart, who welcomed me and they assigned me a triangle who was about four years to teach me chess. So that day I was able to learn chess and also to, like, to get what to eat, and I was very happy. Since then, I started playing chess. With a life story way different from that of many her age, Fiona takes me through how her book of Katwe came about. It's a book which is written by me, 
Ah, you're about, writing about a book. my life. Okay. About my life. So it's called Queen of Cut. That's why people call me Queen of Cut. So that means you're calling yourself <laughs> Queen of Cut. <Kato. laughs> yeah. That's a nice one. Is it because of the chess you're playing? Yeah. Because you merged like when they came and asked me about the piece I liked, I was like, I like the queen because it moves in many lines and does like the best moves I like. Today the story has been translated into a movie that will see Hollywood sensation Lupita Nyong'o play the role of Fiona's mother. With life seemingly getting better, Fiona was taken back to school with support of a mentor, Robert Katende. When I joined Chess, after a year, it was not even after a year, like after two terms, I went back to school. After two terms? Mm -hmm. I went back to school and I joined the, the organization called Sports Outreach. It, it took me back to school and started sponsoring me ah. to now. Ah, okay. And your other siblings? Did they manage to go to school and mm -hmm. finish? They also went back because of the chess. Also. Because of the They chess. also joined. Okay. How hard was it for you going back to school? Um, it was not that hard because like, I'd gone to school before and I liked it because like, like when, I, when I'd, I'd uh, moved out, out of school, I could see like kids going back to school and could feel bad because I had nothing. Mm -hmm. So the day they told me that I'm going back to school, I was so happy, very, very happy. And when I went back, okay, like the first time, I did, okay, everything did not go very well. Like I did bad even in class. I was among like the last. Oh. Yeah. But after like they put me on coaching, I started performing. Then mm. I came back. Okay. Is it because of the time, the time I, frame? I was you, off. Yeah. Okay. The chess game is well known for being a, a man's game or boy's game. How did you pick interest in it? Um, I don't know. By the way, before I joined chess, I'd never got to know about chess. I'd never even heard about chess. It was the first time I saw chess. It was my first time to hear the word, <laughs> and even that was my first time to see it. So when I joined, I found there a few girls. There were like around nine girls. And when I joined, when I saw girls, okay, like I was more comfortable because I saw some girls. Yes. So I joined and I started. So there are some girls who are competing with me, which was good. Mm. But I liked boys more than girls because I grew up with boys at home. So because I was playing with girls, I mean with, with boys, boys, and they knew much than the girls, so I caught up quickly. Mm. Yeah, that's when I got to an international level quickly. And then, okay. Okay. Which schools did you attend? The schools. Um, I've been on Mulanpo. From Mulanpo, I went to a school called Universal. From Universal, I joined second Setembo Vocational School, which I am right now again. Okay. Which class are you now? I've, I'm in five, my back for senior four. All right, we'll be going for a short break, but when we return, Fiona will be telling us about the challenges she's been facing in the industry. Do not go away. I won an award. That's I was nice. among the three. I was the third one born. Oh, okay. I'm glad you're still here with us on Life Stories, a show that inspires you in whatever path you decide to take. The road to success is never easy, and through her unwavering determination and the support of her mentor Robert, Fiona has been able to beat all the odds to get there. Most of the time, like when maybe I go upload, I've gone. This is the challenge I, I get mostly. Like when I've gone, I spend there maybe two months, one month. So coming back, like I'm going back to school to catch up is really hard for me. Mm. So that's a real challenge I've gone. Because yeah. most of the time I do it during again, school time. Another challenge is, is okay, like to get money. Most of the time like I want like to empower other girls and I don't have like someone maybe to to give me like that kind of helping hand. Uh -huh. yes. That's what I do. But I've tried to empower some. Mm. Uh, recently, la last year, I did the clinic, HS clinic, where I empowered some girls. There are 400 girls who have turned up. And I taught some, ch I taught chess, because mm. I got some money when I went to abroad. I'd gone for women and the world champion. In New York. Mm -hmm. yes. So when I got money, I came back and I, that's the money I used. 
Unlike many people in similar situations, Fiona has not allowed success to go to her head. She shares with me her passion to help children. That time when I was living in slums, I like used to say like kids die, scissors, you know, oh, yes. and there are many scissors there. So it's inspired me to become a physician and one day maybe I can become a hope to them. Instead of focusing on uh, being a pediatrician in future, why don't you instead focus or pursue your chase further? Yeah, I would like that, but you know, life is hard. You mm. don't know what might come out. So. I can do two things that I go. That's what I think. Okay. That I can pursue the outside and decide to move on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. When she recounts her achievements that include attending the Women of World Summit in New York, the 18 year old immediately lightens up. Her recognition among the renowned women of the world is indisputably commendable at her age. My first time to go in the USA, like I'd gone like for the book promotion, so they, they, they invited me for the Women in the World Summit. That's the time I got to see Kaspar Love, mm. the, the former chess champion. Okay. Yeah, he came there because we had an uh, interview together with him. Mm. So we sat together and they asked us questions and we finished. When we finished, I thought everything was done. So they did, like, they made it like a surprise to give me like a trophy, like I'd won. Oh, an nice. award, but I won an award. That's I was nice. among the three. I was the third one won. Oh, okay, that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, that's when I met Oprah. Mm. Yeah. Oprah and Winfrey? Mm-hmm. Okay. And that was really great for me. I know. What other countries have you traveled to? Um, I've been in Kenya. I've been in Sudan. Um, I was in, in Dubai. I've been in Russia, I've been in Turkey. What was the first country you went to? Uh, that was Sudan when we went from we were from the chess project and we went for the junior, African junior. Oh. Mm -hmm. And how did you perform? Uh, we performed well because our team, like Uganda, was the best. <coughs> mm -hmm. We came back when we were best. Okay. We came back with a trophy and gold medals. Her tale is about discovery, new experiences, and excitement. How was your first experience, the first time you landed in the USA, or maybe the other, any other country that you went to first to play chess? I'll talk about the experience of Sudan, because that was my first time. I really didn't believe it that I was going, because even the time when we boarded, I couldn't believe that we were going. <laughs> okay. Instead of even laughing, I was crying because it was too much for me. Oh, so that's it, sweet. And, and even winning the games, because the last game, my last game, I was really, really afraid because it was my first time to go abroad and meeting like a girl, like they are talking about these prayers. Mm. You know, in Uganda, we have good prayers, but okay, like the problem is like how like to, they don't have to like support us to Uganda. Yes. Yes. So I was really good, but I'd never got that because people did know me, no one knew me, so they're talking about the other prayers. So I could feel, you know, I, I was the so tension. scared. Yeah, I was so scared. That's it. They're saying I'm versing this one, I'm versing this one. Like everyone is saying, oh, that one is done. That one is done. <laughs> so I was just making the news vice versa. Yeah. It's done me, I make it. <laughs> yes. the other way. So when I, I, I met this girl, she was called Elizabeth, she was a Kenyan girl. That's the one whom I remember very well because she's an international prayer for what she had prayed for a long time. Mm. Uh, I was so scared because everyone was talking about her. She's so good in chess. So mm. when I met her, I prayed her and good enough, I won her, oh, which yes. was good for me. And that was the last game that made us to win. Okay. Yeah. Please join me as I welcome Fiona's mom to the show. Harriet Nako is Fiona's mother. The humble lady takes me through her experience raising a talented daughter in the limelight. Fiona and Nyonyo Demula Ngama Ntino Yafiru Wata Ata Wenga Ine Miyake Isatu. Obula Mugwari Butia Ngo Yafiru Wata Ata Wenga. Kale Tebiyali Vyangu Obula Mugwatu Kalo Viliru Luen Sunga na sangi wa mbela wakasikola. Kale wenabela yon sente ze nyumba ne zimbula wenasoko kubela. Katine nzira ya waka. 
nevi ntu nevi teke wa muganda wangi nevi ntu vyo nane wako lachi neva viba nene na nenta niko kuvede wa mama wangi yikatwe yenari mbelo kuveda as Harriet struggled to sell maize on the streets to make ends meet and raise her daughter, she never dreamt of the blessings in her life which lay ahead. It was a good thing to do. I was a good friend. I was a good friend. I was a good Ne 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 so kambira o na yimbira ngi nkaluvira inyumba abana o kusoma o kuwa lango mtumu kati abana nenge zanga ko na yimbira nga yo yali yali nzivunyo kwe gamba kati abana nembati kanga kasori inga wamanye vivia kasori abana veti kanga kasori abatali na chisa ni baba muri yako juki davali vate o echimu echimu ngo chitise o mu no mu sivo lugo lugo yeno lusiva mu o mugua pata sivo lukute koma senta baya ivali mazira tuala kasori o mu ngawa mu bali yako o mu ne bako la chenda la ne vazire tori watu ali sato na ba wa kona ngengeri wengi ana yembera yon teyari nungi oktuali zawa kakati muala u fiona Kwa katuwaliza wa mune gundi ni mtabani wa mkulu. Mbwe watu, wewe wakera kumachene wa gama chene wa mama, nzanya chesu, wengo mzadi wa uli roti ya. Kati nze, kari wa mzanyo kusoka narisi vitegele vya vya chesu, narisi chuli langa kono uwa mzanyo chesu. Kusoka narima nye mipira. Na yunga habana habo mwana ulimu kusoka ukugenda. Na muku vila dale miko. Njaga la punta ambulize kasori wangi. Ate bobu kwa ata kubo tunonyeye chokulia. Choko mwana agenda kuvereyo. Yada nga mtumye kuluzi nga nse mkwata nga mkube mige miitilivu. Nga mwanya wana. Nga nga kwa mbula kwa nga kwa ate kubo. Nga nga mbu mwana una avadechi. Kale vambio kutu sabo ya nga manti mama. Eri wali yochi. Wali ya bakochi. Balokole, tuzanya chesi, neba tubulide njiri, neba kola buwe bati. Kati uloku banti, nalimu lokole. Kati uya ngama, ntiba tubulide njiri. Nengamba, kankulechi, kankamuleke, nagenda, neba giranga. Na atandiko okuzanya uwe nti yunga mazo kufite gira katino yu kochi na jana neyanju ya na yungo kusoka na mkubanyi emigo jari minji bambi. Kati ovula mbuchu sebuti ya vuchanga fio na atandiko kuzanya chesi? Ovula mbuchu kidedala. Kubanga tuwali tetulina wetusula, tuli wano, nti woyinzo tusanga, nti wewafe, nti ya tusuze wano, luli tusuze wali, na yuka tituline wafe. Tulina emele ya fetuyu njia tujia muni milo ya fovalu mondo uva toko uva mwogo tetuchi ayu nza kuchigulecho. Tulie embele yowe tali. Nga nebuwe nkuba buwewe tonyo uva chito nza kudao ntia haka ntule kisijia kola wati olino kusala magezo la enti ya vana voba vila uovu ngachi. Vana vange kativa somi na lisiri na suvi. Havana vange vali mbivina vya wagulu. All right, we'll be going for a short commercial break. We have a lot in stock for you, so do not go away. So all the three, that is Fiona, uh, Benjamin, and Ivan, okay. they all came from this program, and then they represented Uganda. To me, it was a breakthrough. Success is not about luck. It's about focusing on your dream, taking the challenges as they come, and having the correct role models. Who are your role models in life? Um, one of them is Kasparov, mm. who was, was a world chess champion. Okay. So he's one of the people who inspired me to, like, to, get, to get a dream of becoming a grandmaster. Okay. Yeah. What does the word success mean to you? The person has got his dream. 
mm. who are over who has completed her dream. What advice do you give to the girl child in Uganda? Most of the people take life like it's hard. Mm. But life is easy. I always tell like the youth to be patient mm. and to have hope and dream. Okay. Yeah. What is that achievement you look at? Something you've achieved from chess and say yes, I did it. Uh, one of them is my, is the house which I got like when I got my some money from chess, I managed to build my mum a house, which is outside the slum and which I like very much and it's right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's very beautiful. So thank you. Very I beautiful. just like the view of it. Yeah, it has a beautiful view. I can see the trees, the hills. That's mm. really beautiful. Ah, uh, and uh, about also the book which is written about my life mm. and those movies coming up very soon so those are one of the shifts. I now get to meet the man who's been very supportive in Fiona's life and also has contributed a lot to her success. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, tell me more about yourself. Who are you? Hmm. I'm Robert Katende. I will say I'm an engineer by profession because I did uh, civil in Chambogo. Then in 2007 I was able to go for IT and computer engineering at Kampala University. Okay. But I take myself to be a sports missionary because I use sports to mentor and transform lives, mm. mainly of children who are facing some tragedies in life. Mm. <laughs> Having personally gone through such hard life, uh, I realized that it was by the grace of God to be who I am. Mm. So I decided to just invest in the children who are facing the same tragedies I faced to see how I can share the talents God has given me to help them at least achieve their full potential. Okay. Yeah. So you're just trying to give back to the community? Somehow, because <laughs> yes. I feel about the calling on my life. I yes. just find myself doing it. I find contentment in doing that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then why chess? Why, why did you choose chess? Is it uh, a passion you've been having since you're young? Uh, actually, my passion is soccer, because I'm a soccer player. And okay. I'm a center forward playing serious soccer. Mm. But I, my heart went out for those who are not playing soccer. Okay. And that's how I, I thought of how best I can engage them. I tried other games before introducing chess. Mm. Uh, like, Non traditional games like name game, what but it could become monotonous. You come you can't come today, you play name game, even tomorrow, even the other yes, day. Yes. Yeah, so but I had played chess in my university. Okay. And I had a chess board in my room. So I just had but I battled with the idea for like almost two weeks whether will this student will be able to understand this game. Mm. But I was able to overcome this kind of fear by asking myself that after all, I'm just looking for a platform to build a relationship. So I just told them, uh, I'm going to come and teach you a new game. And I remember the first time I asked them, does any one of you know how to play chess? One of them said, ah oh, yes, me I know. When we are at school, we go in the circle and then we chase after one another. Oh my God. So, <laughs> I don't know, that's not what I'm meaning, yeah. uh, meaning a game. So the following day when I brought it, I think there was, some of them had seen it in a movie. Like, yeah, I've seen this thing being played in a movie. So that's how it all started. They didn't, know, they didn't even have an idea about it. Okay. Yeah. And how successful were you after uh, you introduced chess? the game to them? Oh, okay, introducing chess, actually the first time I introduced the game, many children turned up. Actually, there were over 20, but we had mm. one board just getting on the ground and we put the board on the, on the floor oh. and we could all get and sit around the board just to get, but most of them were just curious, what is this? They wanted just to get to know. Yes. But after something like three weeks, the number went on decreasing. Mm -hmm. Actually, it decreased seriously up to almost around five of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we continued with the five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how it, it progressed. And then after the five, those are actually the ones I'm regarding as the pioneers of the whole program. <laughs> So those are the ones I stayed with for some good time, almost close to six months. So almost like, a, yeah, it became monotonous. You come every day, you play, you share, you talk about life situations, then you go the following day. So until when I learned that there was a, a national chess tournament going on, which is going to be for the schools. Well, before all that, you didn't even know there are tournaments? No. Wow. 
Wow. Okay. Because all I knew by then chess was being played in secondary schools and, and very few secondary schools actually, which are known like Ruviri SS, Wudo, yeah. those famous uh, well established schools. Otherwise, you could only find it at the university. Now, what happened is that when I came to take these kids to the tournament, I didn't have the money. It was even a serious battle for me to take the children to the, to the school's tournament. Because uh, remember the president for the federation then asked me, these are not students, these are not coming from any school. They cannot participate in this event. And the worst of all, they were coming from the slums. No one could actually in any way tolerate having them there. So it was a battle. Just that I was so persistent, it took me almost close to a month until uh, I always say that he made a very good mistake to put a condition for me because I became, I think, so, so overpressing. And then he wanted to see how he can get rid of me. He said, okay, young man, if you can afford to pay what it takes to have your children come in, then I can allow them. Okay. So he was sure I couldn't afford yes. it anyway. So eventually I shared with sports outreach, and then uh, they reached out to some of the friends in the US. Then they sent me some. I think they were, it was one hundred and twenty dollars, which was enough to enable me transport the children and even be able to register them for the event. That was in two thousand and five, and the event was in Wudo, King's College. Mm. So when they went and participated, it was like a blast. Anyone wow. could not believe that they can play like that. Yeah. And then Sports Outreach got an opportunity, more like a slot to help children whom they were working with to go back to school. Yeah. So the priority was given to the chess program because they just said, no, if these kids can sit to the chess board and concentrate, perhaps given an opportunity, they can even sit in class and concentrate yes. no matter where they come from. So that's how the opportunity unfolded. Okay. And as I speak right now, I have almost 60% of them now having that opportunity to go to school. Okay. And those I started with, actually two of them now are in the university. How and when did Fiona join? Uh, Fiona joined when it was almost like the program had already run or maybe like for two years. Mm. Yeah, she came in, uh, actually she came following the brother. Mm. But how me, I didn't know. By then, I think she was around nine, eight or nine years. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. She was um, around eight or nine years. Yeah. How, how did you see that there's something special about Fiona? Uh, actually, initially, when she came, I took her like any other child. Mm. But the only maybe special attention I gave to her was I had only three girls in the program by then, and they were all very young. And actually, I think the oldest was around five years. Now, Fiona coming in was more like the older girl in the program yes. at the time. So I was asking myself, how will I make her feel comfortable in this chess program, which is dominated by boys? Mm. So what I did, I asked a young girl called Gloria. I said, Gloria, uh, meet Fiona, and I want you to teach Fiona whatever you know in chess. And by then, Gloria only knew the names of the pieces. <laughs> So, yeah, that's how she started. But what I was looking at is to see how she can bond yes. and feel at ease in the program dominated by boys. Yes. So that's how actually the whole program started. And she was coming, we could have a meal. I didn't even know initially that she came following a brother or whether she had even a brother in the program. Oh, dear. I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, and I remember actually the first day <clears throat> she came, I was not around. Mm. She arrived before I came. And she was, I think, somehow tortured because she was very dirty and very abusive. She was so aggressive. Oh. And I think the rest of the, pro the children whom she found, yeah. they were also very reactive. Yeah. And I think they even tried to harass her. You're very dirty, don't come and join us. You're so dirty, what? Yeah. But eventually, the following day she came, and that's when she found me. Okay. So I welcomed her, and this one, that's when I attached her to Gloria. Okay. And then she kept on coming all the days, until when I went even to connect to where she stays. Okay. Yeah. Um, how do you manage to look after them? Uh, it's not so easy, but I uh, would say the strategy I've portrayed is to grow leaders. Mm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to how can I multiply myself. Right now, as I talk about the pioneers, they are right now the leaders mm. of the program. Okay. So what I do is to pass on what I know to them and trying to mentor them to make them leaders. Mm. So because I cannot be able to run up and down on each and everything, 
So at least now I'm confident that I have those six of them who are now ready to be leaders. Even Fiona right now, they are all leading. I just assign them duties and then they are able to do it even when I'm not around. Mm. Yeah. Okay, tell me more about your book, um, Queen of Katwe. Yeah, the Queen of Katwe book, uh, it is also a long process on how actually it all came up. It is actually out. It was launched in 2012. Oh, okay. That's when the hard cover came out. Then the paper cover was released in 2013. Okay, nice. Yeah, it is um, right now selling. I said it's been translated in nine international languages. Oh, okay. It is very much selling, especially in the US, in Europe, and in Russia, and I think German. Mm. Yeah, and Disney has actually bought the rights to make a movie out of it. Disney? The, yeah, the wow. script has already been written. The director is going to be Mira Naya, who I think has ever done a movie here in Uganda I think some 20 years back. I think she's called the Mississippi Masala, something like that. Yes, yes. Yeah, she's the, di the director for that movie as well. So she's chosen that Disney has to come and shoot the film from Uganda in Katwe. It just turned out because when these kids went to participate in Sudan, that was the turning point of it all. Wow. So all the three, that is Fiona, uh, Benjamin, and Ivan, they all came from this program and then they represented Uganda. To me, it was a breakthrough. Yes. No matter how they would perform, because it was their first time to even take a road, apart from crossing it, going to Chibuya Market and come back to Katoe, yes. <laughs> they couldn't even know where it leads. Wow. So it's the first time to go to the airport, first time to board the plane. And it how is many were they? Three of them. Oh dear, that's sweet. Yeah, so they all went. So to me, it was a blast no matter what happens from there. But a week later, they came back with gold medals and a big trophy, having won the championship. Wow. So that was an outstanding yes. kind of news. So when uh, uh, an article was written, uh, this news, uh, the guy was writing for ESPN. When he heard about it, he said, no, this is too, uh, there's a statement said that maybe it, it is hard to be true, something yes. like that, it's yeah. Yeah, it's hard to believe this yeah. is, he said that it is too true to be or to, to believe, something like okay. that. And uh, he wanted to come and verify. Mm. So he went to ESPN. He said, there is this fascinating story I had. I'm not sure whether it's true, but I want to go and determine how much of it is true. Yes. When he came here, he, he was sent by ESPN to write an article. So when he reached the ground, I remember the first day I received him. We came to the slums here. He saw the program, and when I took him back to the hotel, he got his laptop and he wrote an email saying it is true. <laughs> then when I saw it, I said, what is true? He said, Robert, I came here when I was not sure whether this is true. Wow. But what I've seen, it is more than an article. Yes. So that's when he came up with an idea of writing a book. And that's how the book, The Queen of Katwe, came up. All right, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. You can now take me around. I really love to see how the whole place looks like. Uh, the whole of the Katwe slum. The slum. We cannot actually go through all around the slum, but I can take you to some places where our program has been because exactly. the slum is quite big. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. No sure. Maybe you even get to visit some of the places where some of my learners stay. Okay. Of course. Sure. Fiona and Robert take us to the famous Katwe, where Fiona started pursuing her dream. She still goes there to play chess. Wait, I want to go to the highway. Hey, what's that? Hello. What's that? 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 When I reached here, I was overwhelmed at how much talent we have in Uganda. The enthusiasm of the young people learning how to play chess is incredible. Having stayed here for a while, Fiona is recognized by most around here. I as well took the chance to take my first chess lesson and hopefully my new phone career will bear fruit. Um, Kachi, he has prayed here so that you don't bring your knight here. Exactly, if I do it, he eats me up. Okay. No, if you bring it now before protecting, you will be attacking this side. Mm. So it's, it's praying this, 
like to prevent you from coming here. <laughs> okay. It's territory. What if you put she puts there? If if she puts there, then they will take it. And my kingdom won't be protected. Yeah. So it's now safer there when it's there. <laughs> but for the beginner, when you're playing like this, this is okay because it's really good. You're protecting your pieces everywhere. Good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's good, but you had also this more letter like L. You still have it. I have. If I do this, that's still okay now. Okay. If it takes, you take. But anyway, I'm L. Yeah, I'm L, and it moves in L, L form. Uh huh. That's a check. You can take it. It's a bird. Bent. No. Eh. Eh. Bent. Okay. Kachita gezali kujia kulumba ayagala kumala. Chofula bali kulumba alumba king. Bamala moches. Like you can move any piece name way over, but it doesn't. And a king, you can't, you can't, you important. So I want to king, not any other piece. Hey, okay. Yeah. Because I know who I'm backing in a kumala. What about if I do this? What about if I do this? About ah no, that's okay. Okay. So you only must check. No, to me, I could do that. You're not finding a free. Uh huh. That's one of the things. I was talking about. It was L. Eh. That could be. Oh my God, this is this is really amazing. I'm making a very great chess player, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I am. <laughs> Yeah, right, I'll but then you're good, it's so good because you're just beginning, but yeah, you're playing very well. Yeah, they, you. They're protecting your pieces, it's really good. Thank I like you. It. Harriet wraps it up with a word of wisdom to other parents watching the show. Obo Kodango to Semumbeda and Gay, you, Obo Mammy, for the Koba Chi, and Beda Yona, Mana Tom Solo, Mana Tom Muleka, Kugamba. Echo Mukama chi chidabo chi chidabo bidabo be very mukama. Bwekwata, yekatonda yama nyi kwanga bai be to gamba. Chitemot kola chim savenga mere yale ru tem savayanchi. Ebiya mukama e subiya katonda kugenda masu siku da mabega. Wechte geda, ebiya katonda webidi webit yo. Kakati, tomanya tege kaya katonda buri naku katonda tege kachi chi ja vera nech sachichi. Chijia kola vijia tomanyi mbela chegenda kuvela wawo wakati. Fiona has bigger hopes and dreams for the future and encourages young people to work hard to succeed. What are your future plans? My future plans, like in chess, I want to become a grandmaster. Because when I told you about the healer, that's my yes. healer, yeah. That's the one who inspired me to become a grandmaster. And in my like in my studies, I want to become a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. 
All right, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you so much for sharing your life story with us. You're welcome. And I pray that you go higher than what you've achieved now. Oh, thank you. I also hope that the young generation has really picked a leaf from your life. We now await the greatly anticipated box office sellout, Queen of Katwe, a tribute to Fiona's amazing rise to fame from a little-known Ugandan suburb.